Okay, and hello. And today what we're going to be doing is covering doors. Uh, how to uh, not necessarily create them, but how to create the animation to open and close them by using a modifier key on your keyboard. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, copy our last project. And let's go ahead and copy. And we'll paste that into this area. Once we've got it, we're going to go ahead and rename it. And I'm going to call this Project 10 since we're out of menus. And we'll write uh, and we'll call it Doors. Okay. All right. So we'll double click in there and we'll do the same thing for this for the actual project file. And we'll call it Project 10 underscore Doors. And let's double click on it. Now, in the example that I'm going to use, I'm going to, uh, I went and downloaded a couple of doors from the marketplace, uh, from the Unreal Marketplace. It was about $6.99, I think it was like $8 total for the doors. So my doors are going to look nice as far as like the way they look. But uh, programming wise, you know, this could be a boulder, this could be a, a cube mesh. This could be uh, anything really that as long as you can uh, you can animate it or you can use or you can create a cinematic, uh, you should be able to use this technique to be able to open and close the door. OK, so let's go ahead and start. And I'm going to do this in my level one map because I think it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, let's scroll out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, or I'm going to First of all, I need to obviously enter, uh, add, I should say, my doorways. So I'm going to go to library where I already have my doorways. And this should be project 10 doors. There it is. And I want to add, it was a library called, there it is, industrial door pack. So I'm going to add that to project. And the current project that I'm working on is going to be Project 10 Doors. So I'm going to go ahead and add. So for me, that should be fairly quick because I've already used this pack in another in another project. So it, it should have loaded really quickly. Uh, so now we can go ahead and close. And let me go back into my project. So there we are. OK, so in here, I should be able to go back to the content folder. I'll see a, 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 a industrial door pack. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I'm going to go into one of the meshes. And what we'll see is that we have doorways and we have doors themselves. So I'm just going to use a standard door uh, mesh. And let me stick that about right there. And the other thing I'm going to do is come in and make sure that it's actually touching the floor. So let's grab this and put it up a little bit and hit the N key to put it on the floor. Now the other thing I've noticed about this particular door, if you guys go and grab this pack, if you decide that you feel like you're going to purchase this one, is that the door itself is actually kind of a little bit small for my character. So as I try to go through the door, I'm just a little bit uh, too wide. So what I'm going to do with this door to make it uh, the correct size, I think, would be to click on it. I can come over here to scale and I was playing around with it earlier and I did about 1.3 uh, 1.3 just to make the door wider and I didn't make the door any taller because if I started making the door taller I started feeling short so not only was I a little bit wide but I was also short but this right here actually works pretty well I'm able to very easily get through the door path uh, and that's what I'm looking for is something easy to get through that doesn't like really stop the speed. So um, that's what I, I ended up with was 1.3, 1.3, and 1 for, uh, for a size or for scaling the door. From there, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the door itself and place it on there. Now, obviously, the door will not be the correct size because we just resized uh, the door frame. So I'm going to have to resize this door. And if I have the door selected, I should be able to do the same thing. 1.3, 1.3, and leave the size of the door alone. Um, so now I'm going to put this into place. And I'm just going to play around with it. I am going to slow down my camera because uh, I'm speeding around too much. And let's see how close we are. 
So the crazy thing with this door is that it's actually got hinges. So you can kind of see that, like as far as the animation or the, the door, the material door itself has hinges. So I am able to lock or, or put those together and it does create a nice little hinge set. Okay, so once I've got the door where I need it, as far as the door and the door frame being where they where they should be, let's go ahead and start writing the code for this. Um, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually select the door frame itself and we're going to create a cinematic for this. So we're going to right click up on our left click on cinematic. We're going to add sequence and it's going to ask for a folder to put this in. I decided that I was going to put this in industrial uh, with the with the doors. It, might, it made sense to keep it with the doors and uh, I'm going to create a new folder for this and I'm going to call this um, you can call it cinematics. I'm going to call it, uh, yeah, I guess I can call it, uh, what are we, let's see, level sequence. Since that's what it's actually going to be creating is a level sequence. So we'll call it level sequences. We'll double click in there. And I'm going to call this door one. Okay. Um, it's going to make a lot of sense for you guys to organize and keep your folders together. So as soon as we finish with this, I'm going to grab the door and the door frame and put them together and call them door one in a folder. So then that way later, if I'm trying to write code or if I'm trying to remember what code was written to what door, because you may have different doors, you may want the doors to act differently. So not all the doors necessarily are going to act the same. You may have different uh, materials on the doors. So make sure that you keep track of the sequences and which sequences are tagged onto which doors. So for now, I'm going to call this door one. We're going to go ahead and hit save. And for myself, I've already got this because this is where I like working with mine. Yours may still be a floating window, so you may have to go and, uh, and uh, dock your folder. Um, so let's start with uh, uh, type in zero here at the beginning to make sure that uh, your playhead is at the beginning. I'm going to then go to five. And I'm going to right click in this area and say set end time. So now we should have, uh, I have a really long timeline because I did uh, some longer stuff with some, some planets and trying to get things to like circle around. So I've got a very long, and actually let's just, you know, honestly, we just need this to be one second in length. So right there that's where I actually want to right click and make this um, so I can create let's do this let's put that at one second so now we have a timeline that is exactly one second long and that's exactly what we're looking for so I'm going to use the bar down here to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to make sure that my start time or that my playhead is at zero and by selecting the door, I can now right click and say actor to sequence. And it'll be the top option up here, add uh, mesh door one, which is what the name of it is. And from here, I can, I can select everything, but really the only thing I need to change is the yaw. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on that. And I actually like setting this back by about one third. You see where it was about uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.03 seconds from off of the very beginning of the track. And this makes sure that when we go forward and backward that we actually hit the, the opening and the closing keyframe as opposed to it being at zero and sometimes catching it and sometimes not catching it. So um, same thing with the end. I'm going to go now to the end and I'm going to get to about almost one second, but I'm going to stop at about 0 0.30 or 0.97 seconds from the end or into the, the clip. And here we're going to, um, if you click the third button or the second button up here, it's also the shortcut E. Uh, we'll grab this and we'll actually open it, let's say, to about, it depends on what your back wall or where your wall is going to be. 
Uh, but I'm going to leave it like this so that we have a nice swingy open door. And then we can actually check the playing of this. We can see that it opens and closes. All right. So with this done, we now have the animation for the door. Um, we can now start actually working on the code for this. So at this point, I can. I the only thing I will say is make sure that your playhead is at zero. Oops, I don't want that. Just make sure that this is at zero. If this is somewhere else or like back here, it'll start with the door open as opposed to the door closed because it's going to be looking at the playhead to figure out where it's going to start. So uh, make sure that that is at the beginning of your timeline if you choose to have the door start with the close. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the animation that opens and closes for this, uh, for the door, what we want to do is uh, go to settings and go to project settings and we're going to go into input and we're actually going to add an additional key. Uh, what this key is going to do is it's going to uh, be the key that the player uh, touches on their keyboard to open and close the door. So we're going to add an action. We're going to call this uh, door open or I'm going to call it interact because we may end up using it for some other stuff later, like maybe to uh, open a window and we'll be able to use the same key. It'll be our uh, like opening and closing key. So we'll call it interact. And I'm going to make this the letter E since if I look at my keyboard and I happen to be using yeah, a standard keyboard, so I would have WASD, the E key is right above the D. So it's a very easy reach and you can still keep moving with your with the mouse and be looking around while you're hitting the letter E and moving at the same time. So, uh, whoops, I have that done wrong. Let me make sure that that is the letter E. Okay, so we created an action, we named it ourselves called interact, and then we made sure that it was assigned to the letter E. With that, that's all we have to do. We don't have to say, we can just close it and uh, now we can actually write the code that we need to get this to open. So with the cinematic selected and uh, with that we can go into the blueprint editor for uh, for the level and um, right so with that selected we're going to come into the blueprint editor and we're going to right click in here and type in input action okay and there it is so the interact was the name of the key that I created you can see that you have the pause key which we created in a tutorial before the jump key which is the spacebar for us um, and then the fire key which shoots our projectiles which is the left arrow key so if we were to click on interact it would then give us the function for that button so every time we hit the E key this is what's going to happen uh, now the other thing we need to do is uh, let's go and oh we forgot to set up a trigger box so let's set up our trigger box um, so inside the viewport we're going to come again over here to basic we're going to scroll down until we see the trigger box we're going to add the trigger box on the screen next to the door and let me speed up my camera a little bit so this doesn't take forever all right and what we're going to want to make sure is that this trigger box is actually wide enough uh, for our character to be standing in and the reason why we're adding a trigger box is because we're saying that the character has to be inside this trigger box uh, for the uh, for the buttons to open the door or for the E button to actually work we don't want to be standing halfway across the across the room to be able to hit the letter E and then all of a sudden the door opens that wouldn't make sense uh, so let's make sure that this trigger box is tall enough that our character would be standing in front of it and wide enough that uh, when the character needs to be standing far enough away from this to uh, get the door to open. So uh, I would say on the back side maybe a little bit more since the door is going to swing open this way and my character needs to be standing not in the way of that door because there is an overlap so it would stop, it would be not so good. But on the front side it doesn't need to be as bad. 
uh, because the um, so uh, with that animation uh, there what we want to do is click on the door so that we have the door selected we're going to go again to um, the blueprint open level blueprint let's make this big enough and um, so we have the import action that we created just a second ago uh, with the sorry I'm just gonna do it this way with the uh, trigger box selected we can now come and right click here and add event on trigger collision at the beginning of the overlap so when our character is inside the trigger box we'll be able to hit the letter E and to get it to trigger and the other thing we want is again with that box selected right click in this area and we're going to add collision and this time end so once we leave we won't be able to hit the letter E anymore to open the door now the next step is we're going to want what's called a gate and I know that that's ironic that we're making a door and we're asking for a gate but essentially we have what we're looking for we have the press E so when we hit the interact key or the letter E if we are inside the trigger box we will get the the thing to open and once we're if we're outside we won't get the thing to open now the next thing we'll need to do is add what's called a flip-flop I know that sounds weird but that's what they call it and what that does is allows for the animation mid animation to go in the other direction um, so now what we'll need to do is uh, click on the cinematic so with the cinematic uh, selected we want to right click and create a reference to that cinematic uh, uh, on uh, at the door so this will be the opening and the closing this is the representation of the opening and the closing uh, here now uh, I want to make two of these so I'm going to duplicate a copy of this and put it down there next to it here alright so off of this what we want to do is right click and type in uh, play reverse okay and we're looking for this thing called sequencer play it'll have like a little star next to it and that's what we're looking for so it'll create a secondary box which converts the uh, the animation into a something that the play reverse can actually handle and we'll stick the play reverse to the a tag of the flip-flop uh, let's do the same thing now down here but this time we're going to hit play and we don't want the reverse we want just the play sequencer and again it's going to make a little box which is going to help with the transition uh, or so then that way the other element can read it and let me bring this over so then that way it's nice and neat like the other one and we're going to push B off of that so B will be play A will be play reverse uh, the only thing that else that we need to do with this code is uh, if we have the door selected up here the door uh, the door uh, level sequence selected we need to come back to or we need to go down to playback and we need to say end at pause this little this little button took about an hour for me to for, to remember that I had to play it I was doing all sorts of other stuff with code to try to get the door to close or to open and essentially what was happening was I would push play and the door would go and it would it looked like it was haunted like it might be cool if you're trying to make like a like a spooky door where it needs to like close automatically afterwards or, or something like that but to have a door that opens and stays open uh, until you hit the E again and it closes because you hit the key this is what you need to have you have to make sure that this pause at end is actually selected so uh, with that we should now be able to compile and save and let's go ahead and push play and see that this works so let's open this up uh, let me close that and let's push play and see now that this works so I'm gonna notice that the door is closed I'm gonna come up to the door I'm gonna hit the letter I'm gonna hit the letter E oops I'm gonna hit the letter E and I can walk away from the door I can walk through the door I can walk to the other side of the door and notice that the door stays open so if I come towards the door and I hit the letter E the door closes and again I you know other than hitting the letter E will cause the door to open so that would be the only condition that causes the door to open and close 
and here you can see the flip-flop this is why it's called flip-flop so I'm continuously hitting the letter E and depending on where the animation is it automatically flips and goes into the other direction okay fantastic so that's the end of the tutorial that's all the code and everything that we need uh, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, you have a wonderful day bye bye